Today we're going to take a look at our homeschool areas and our primary homeschooling area in the back corner of our second living room. In the past we've homeschooled mainly in the dining room and still do some of our schooling there and this year in our living room. So I'm going to show you that as well as some other spaces in our house where homeschooling happens and where homeschooling things are stored. All right, let's zoom in here. What do we have? We have our basket where we pull our month by month books we're going to be reading for our specific topic that month or unit study and our bookshelf for subject and genre area books. We have some other bookshelves that I can't see right now because my baby's sleeping in the room next door and it's a bookshelf where I house books for uh, by grade level and for future books that we'll be using. I like to keep out our main guided reading text here and then books my son reads for enjoyment um, are mostly in this basket and we collect nature sometimes that they just randomly wanted to keep these sticks and I thought they looked pretty so I'm like sure we'll put them on our shelf this butterfly and some shells and a wasp's nest and some horseshoe crabs and a cicada um, exoskeleton some other random little creatures eventually like to get some fancier like shadow box type situations to hang up as we collect more and then over here we have our little plant and some recycled spice jars for random things like rocks and gems and buttons and dice that we can use for math or decoration little silk plant from i think burlington and we have our chalkboard for what we're learning to memorize from the Bible, Psalm 1 this semester, and our microscope. I really like this map. We got this on Amazon for like 15 bucks and it was already laminated and it's supposed to be the most accurate map of the world, which made me really happy because I was like trying to find the most accurate one when I started hearing that, you know, Greenland on a lot of maps is humongous and like made to look bigger than like our country or Africa. And, you know, Africa is made to look really small when it's like the second biggest continent. <laughs> so I like that it's more accurate and it's very pretty. And we got this bead garland from Hobby Lobby, 40% off. You can't go wrong. Love Hobby Lobby. I hope you have it in your area. Fun little puzzle for learning shapes and colors and composing and decomposing shapes with the little ones. This fun little cart I got off, let's see, Facebook Marketplace for 35 bucks, and that's pretty good compared to the retail price. Let's see, what do we have in here? I decided the white drawers would be stuff I'm using for my son, so I have some stickers and extra math-related things and um, the supplies that go with our microscope. And then the light gray ones I decided were going to be like community things like clipboards and this dry erase sleeve. Then the medium gray I decided would be things that my one-year-old needs me to do with her. These puzzles, wooden puzzles. And then the darker gray ones are things my four-year-old can do on her own or mostly with me. Like little extra educational activities. These are related to math and then some folder games I'm not going to pull them out now but shapes, colors and patterns and things like that and then another drawer for doing together these are puzzles they might need assist or she might need assistance with still and then the black ones are independent drawers things she can do on her own and most of what she can do on her own is just in her room or I pull out for her um, as needed all right, so here we are for our desk. I'm super thankful because my husband is a carpenter and he built me this desk with some leftover wood and stained it for me. Our first year of homeschooling, I homeschooled at the dining room table and that is a great place to homeschool and for a lot of people, the better choice. But it just so happened that my husband was like, I think we need to have our own homeschool area. I was like, uh, yeah, okay, sure. And at that point, I actually thought, I'm so used to homeschooling in the dining room. I'm not sure if I could adjust myself to actually transitioning to another place, but it's been amazing. And so I got these legs off of Amazon for legs for like 36 bucks. And then it took me a while to get some chairs. We were just using the piano bench for a while. 
I wanted to find the right price and the right look. And I am super thankful because I found these four chairs for $30, all of them for $30, not $30 each, all of them for $30. And I was like, whoa, thank you, Lord, because they look so pretty and that's a great price. So I'm glad I waited. And then this board we got for free because like before we even built the desk, my husband saw it on the side of the road and on it was written free. And he called me and was like, do you want this? I'm like, sure. I wasn't sure at that point what we were going to do with it. We hadn't even established this area of our back living room as the homeschool area yet. And he got it and he took it off the stand that it was on and mounted it on the wall. And then, you know, slowly it's all come together. And then up here I have this garland from Hobby Lobby also is 40% off. I love Hobby Lobby. So look at their ads online and see what's going to be on sale that week before you go shopping. And wait till it's on sale because it's a constant rotation and it's going to go on sale like within a very short time, like every other month or something, you know, really soon. And then these like letters are the initials for my kids' names, Grace, Josiah, and Aaliyah. And I think I paid less than four dollars each it was like 250 or three dollars for these letters and they're thin wood but they do the job and here's a very messy nature box in the works but uh, my little sweet girl she loves collecting random dud bugs and um, like i said i would love to get more organized in the future and have some pretty like framed shadow boxes with proper labels and pinning systems for keeping ones that are well put together and look extra lovely we've tried writing what we found in dates and things and pictures but yeah that's a work in progress all right and then my daughter this is her little area you know she obviously spends a lot more time playing and doing other things on the floor or couch but she likes to sit at her little desk sometimes too she's four and we do some preschool and she has her little corn husk dolls in her basket and her little digital camera i think we'll use that for like nature walks but right now it can also be used for just anything she wants to take a picture of little digital wonder bible you know screen free internet free audio bible and you can decide what book they can listen to some books they might not be ready to hear a little fun math wooden thing i thought it looked pretty and you know counting beads and we can switch out the jar with different cute um, counting objects for different seasons. A little bird. I thought that was sweet. And then I keep this on her desk because the colors match so nicely, but also because it reminds my daughter to water her little plant. That's one of her little morning responsibilities is to water our plant. And then we keep our globe here. Something that is pretty and we can use on a regular basis. This is our shared supply basket, and I keep a very minimal amount of supplies out to avoid messes and, you know, keep the homeschool room looking aesthetic and minimal. It just creates a very nice environment for me and for the kids. So we just have our crayons, dry erase markers for the board, one pair of scissors for each of the older ones, my pen, multicolor pen, pencils, a little sand timer, a pencil sharpener and we have a dry eraser for the board and we have some a couple glue sticks and then all our other supplies go into my son's double closet I think thankfully he has a huge closet so one side is for arts and crafts and puzzles and games and extra materials as I'll show you and then my son puts his little spaceship here he just got and he has some, you know, all the different coins to make up uh, dollar amounts for math and some uh, dice, his wonder Bible, a hundreds board, a wooden clock. And I was super thankful to get this wooden clock for $15 on Etsy. And sadly, the seller stopped selling these wooden clocks. And so they're a bit more costly. But I had literally been looking every so often to see if I was going to find a clock that was in my price range because I was like I just can't spend that much on a wood clock and I you know I liked the wood ones better than my big funky yellow one which are cute and fine but I was going for a certain look and so when I saw this one I was like thank you I got it and yeah she stopped selling them within a few months so but they're they're fun and pretty and then of course we have some cool spots where I had to sand because yes we were doing our Christmas market project with a permanent marker and I walked away for a minute and my one-year-old was up here with that permanent marker and bam bam and on the board and thankfully you know Mr. Clean Sponge got the, 
the permanent marker off the board, but I had to sand the marker right off, so we're gonna have to restain. But you know what? It's okay. It looks loved. So that's this little area. And then I love that it's in our living room because we can just plop over here on the couch and snuggle. And then we can just run out in the back door and play on our trampoline and sandbox and you know, in our little butterfly garden and other little things in the backyard. And then I'll put out some puzzles that might be related to what we're learning about or other games on the ottoman. And then this shelf over here is, I gotta rewrite Grace's name, but I'll write, you know, Grace's name on her little basket with her preschool activities or main resources we're working from right now. You know, his math binder and then, you know, Josiah's main resources that we're using right now. And then this is like an extra basket for if we're working on a project where right now it's being used for our math games that we want to have out, you know, and anything extra that we're not using right now, I keep in that extra closet. It just makes everything feel minimalistic and uh, avoids extra unnecessary messes. And then down here we have, you know, more high access favorite books of my children that are in series and you know non-academic ones but fun ones and then some little baskets i rotate out activities for my one-year-old and kind of some key little board books i read to her i also have her little basket of board books by the rocking chair of favorite books i read to her before her, her or after her nursing sessions naps and bedtime and then you know things like you know wires and remotes and this one's empty and this one is a little people's arc and so I can switch out different little people uh, sets that I can do with my four and my one-year-old. I like that we have this little digital fireplace. It has a heater setting so in our few cold days that we get in Florida the kids will wake up in the morning and they will hurry and turn the heater on and relax in the little bean bags while I make breakfast so that's always fun to have that in here and here's a little listening area and of course School doesn't just happen in the homeschool room. In our dining room area, we have our morning basket on a stool. Music practice happens in the front living room. And we have some other books here that we've read. All right, this is my son's double closet where we keep art supplies, craft supplies, stamp speeds, and more and coloring and construction. Then up here, I have this holding place for like empty pencil boxes and little like group caddies if we want to like put supplies at different tables for a homeschool group. We have Play-Doh paint, handicrafts, and you know our glue gun in these bins here on the first row. I like to put things up high that I wouldn't want my children to get into. <laughs> and then we have our math balance, leapfrog magnets, math and math folder games. And we have base 10, more base 10, math cubes, history, really us, so that's things like American symbols or like paper money from different um, time periods, anything like that that would have to do with history. And for science, I like to keep things like ant farms. We have like a hummingbird feeder in there. We have like the connector tube for making tornado bottles. Mentos for certain science experiments, anything like that that we would use for life science or, you know, any branch of science. A butterfly pavilion. We do butterflies every spring. A Smoky Mountains 3D map from when we went to the Smoky Mountains. And these wipe erase Melissa and Doug mats for geography and math. So on the top shelf on this side is things like science kits, handicraft kits like a weaving loom. If you have like a pottery kit, we will eventually get educational puzzles and board games. And keeping them up high again is a definite strategy to keep them out of it. So I can pull down what we want one at a time and then switch them out without having millions of puzzle pieces and game pieces everywhere. Anything I don't need on a regular basis also goes in here. And all crafting supplies and things go in here because, you know, it's been here so long, they don't really think about getting into this. But in case they do, because when they were younger they did, I do keep things like paint, like high mess in here. Definitely had an accident when my son was younger where, <laughs> of course it's funny, you know, looking back, but I had the paint in these lower drawers and, you know, one day you come in, you have to do something real quick, turn your back, and there's paint all over the place and on them. So, <laughs> very strategic. We planned and placement for things. So, our art supplies are things like our markers. These are those mess-free markers that go with specific coloring books. And then I have 
separate containers for things like paint. So watercolors and finger paints. Again, my other paints like tempras and things like that are up there so far. They don't seem to get into this where they've forgotten about it. Pencils, colored pencils, glue and scissors and glue sticks seem to go together for things like crafts. So I put them together and of course paints seem to go together. And so it's really nice. It's in their own little bins and you just grab and go. Ready to go. And that's art supplies. And then for craft supplies, I'd like mini containers for everything or little drawers, but that's actually really not space efficient to have a bunch of little tiny drawer sets. And if you just want some pom-poms, it is so much easier to just grab the bag of pom-poms. And then if you need multiple things, you okay, for this craft, I need this, this, and this. You just grab a few bags and you, it's ready to go, you know? So it's not gorgeous, but it's practical labeled bags. For all those types of craft supplies stamp speeds and more we have some fancy hole punches beads spirograph art rubber stamps for shapes colors and animals and letters and we have some tracing stencils under that and stamp pads and some self inking stamps and face paint under the beads. Coloring and construction. Notebooks, coloring books, activity books, and construction paper. I am sure you noticed that we have sheets on our couch. And yeah, I think it's a great idea because I'd rather at snack and story time slash tea and tail time be able to come on the couch while we do eat all three of our meals on, or excuse me, at the dining room table. We like to eat our, you know, afternoon snack and sometimes our bedtime snack while they're spending time with daddy on the couch. And so, yes, that means I have to sweep in here more often. But um, having these sheets on the couch just allows us to be a little more relaxed, even if some feet are on the couch and things like that. And I can feel like no biggie and enjoy our couch and keep it looking nice at the same time. So yeah, and then just throw those sheets there on the wash and we're good to go. How many of you other moms also keep sheets on your couch with the little ones around? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs>